Hello, hello, and welcome to another video with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Today's video uh, will be in reference to the Bible study that we have restarted uh, as we continue to go through the Word of God in the New Testament. We're going to do chapter 2 today because today is December the 2nd, 2023, and we have uh, started our Bible study classes again. And uh, we started in the book of Corinthians with the first book. So all throughout the month of December, we are going to do Bible study in the book of Corinthians 1 and 2. So today's video will be uh, chapter 2, 1 Corinthians. All right, and it begins with Paul because Paul is the one who is actually speaking. He's speaking to the saints that have those that have been converted into the kingdom in the area of the Corinth, which is a city in Greece. And he is uh, speaking to those individuals in that city that have been baptized, washed, converted into the kingdom of God. Okay, so chapter two says, I, brothers, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. He just made it plain and simple, he's saying. I didn't use these big words, fancy words, or fancy college words or anything like that. I just came to you real simple is what Paul is saying. I came to you, came not with excellency of speech, okay, or of, or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. So he shared in, uh, excuse me, a lot of the testimonies or the different experiences that some of the saints were going through at that time. He says, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. So he had the glory of the Lord manifesting all around him, the anointing continually confirming who he was in the kingdom and the fact that he was a kingdom citizen, a heavenly being. But what he says here in verse four, he says, my speech, the way that I was talking and my preaching it was not in enticing words, okay, or of man's wisdom, but it was in the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and of power from the Holy Spirit that he was able to convince those that he is speaking to right now to be converted, and they were converted. Because it's ultimately the Holy Spirit that does the conversion, that uses uh, an individual to actually speak through them to an individual to convert them into the kingdom of God. And then it's the baptism of himself. So we just are the vessels, again, as we've been told throughout the word of God. We are just the vessels that God uses for salvation in the earth. Okay, so um, verse 5 says that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. He says, how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world. Because the world has a wisdom. Okay? And God has a wisdom. He said, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Okay? Those that have been birthed into the kingdom, they speak the mystery of God in wisdom. Okay? Even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So that's letting us know that there is a whole nother, whole nother way of thinking, a whole nother uh, aspect of conversation, a whole nother revelation to the things of God. That we, unless we're birthed into the kingdom of God, unless, unless we've been born again of the Holy Spirit, we will know nothing of it because he considers it, well I should say an individual will know nothing of it because God considers that knowledge to be a mystery. And it is to those outside the kingdom. They will never know. So he goes on to say that, uh, verse 6, How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the of the princes of this world that come to naught. 
But we speak the wisdom of God in, in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord our glory. Okay? But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. So God has revealed those things to them by his spirit, okay? For the spirit searches all things, the deep things of God, okay? And in the deep things of God, as the spirit begins to search, he, he begins to reveal the mysteries of the Holy Spirit, the mysteries of the Heavenly Father, the mysteries of the heavens, okay? And then verse 11 says, For what man knows the things of a man? except the spirit of man, which is in him. Even so, the things of God knows no man, but the spirit of God. Only God knows. Only God knows, unless someone tells them. And, you know, it's unfortunate because there is a mocking spirit, my God, help us, Holy Ghost, that tries to mock the spirit of God in trying to persuade the kingdom of God that is God speaking when it may not be. So we got to be careful in these last days. And Heavenly Father, as always and forever, will I always pray for discernment for the kingdom of God, for you to increase it continually in the mighty name of Christ for us because we need it. So he says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, okay? Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. And then this is comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. For the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, and neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Okay, and that is why I continue to pray for discernment for our kingdom, because... For us to always know and be assured of what the Heavenly Father is saying to us in the earth. Verse 15 says, But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we, we have the mind of Christ, okay? Yes, we have the mind of Christ. Once you have been birthed into the kingdom of God. Okay, so uh, the verse that we want to take a look at and elaborate on is going to be verse 14 because we're going to take a look at the natural man versus the unnatural man, okay, which would be the spiritual man. The natural man, because here in verse 14 it says, but the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him, and neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. And without the Holy Spirit, they will not know. That is why, as I petitioned or stated on this channel many days, many times, that we must pray and ask the Heavenly Father to give us revelation and wisdom and knowledge into his word. What is it, oh Heavenly Father, that you want us to uh, receive, okay, from, what, from your word and you planting it in the earth for man to read it? In the name of Christ Jesus, you know, because... Uh, you could be misled by your own way of interpreting the word of God. Okay, so the book, a couple books actually, uh, we're going to take a look at in reference to this natural man is uh, Romans. Romans is going to be our first book that we look at because we take a look at what God says about the natural man. Chapter 8, Paul is speaking to the Romans about the natural man. And I'm going to start with chapter 8, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit do mind the things of the spirit. Because you begin to crave for the word of God. You begin to crave for the going to church. You begin to crave for everything in the spirit, okay? Once you have been birthed into the spirit, you begin to crave for heaven. 
And he goes on to tell us that in verse 5, For they that are after the flesh, they do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, they go after the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. And you can only be spiritually minded if you have been wholly spiritually filled, okay? If you have been converted into the Holy Spirit in order to be spiritually minded. Now, you can be, of course, uh, operating in it some form of a, a spirit, but it may not be the Holy Spirit if you have not been converted by the Heavenly Father. And you'll have the mind of whatever that spirit is that's operating through you, but it won't be the Holy Spirit. And it may even um, make you think you have the Holy Spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit. It may just be a spirit operating through you, okay? So we want to make sure that we have the conversion, the testimony of the truth, because the Holy Spirit will definitely confirm his presence within an individual. You will know, and you will be able to uh, see other people that have and be able to recognize and discern other people that have the Holy Spirit also. Yes, you will. And then once in doing that, God will make you accountable for how you treat those people too. <laughs> My God, help us Holy Ghost. Okay, going on. But uh, here we have here, um, verse 6, for, the, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, he says. Because the carnal mind is at war against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, and neither indeed can it be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, okay? But you are not in the flesh. Once you've been converted into the kingdom of God, once you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost, you're no longer considered to be in the flesh because you've been born again of the Holy Spirit. That's what the new birth, that's what the new creature is all about. You have taken on the celestial being presence, and that's who you are now. Now, of course, you're gonna you have a flesh, okay, but God doesn't see you like that anymore. He sees you as a spirit, the Holy Spirit that He's given you. He sees that spirit now instead of your flesh. Verse 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So if you're in the spirit, and so if the Spirit of God dwell in you, now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is not his, okay? He's not a part of the kingdom of God. He's not a part of the kingdom of heaven. He does not belong to Christ, so he doesn't belong to the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father is over the heavens. So therefore, as we just read here in verse 9, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, then he is not a part of the kingdom of God. That's very important. So verse 10 says, And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. All right? Another scripture we can take a look at and read in reference to this natural man. Matthew. Let's look at uh, the book of Matthew. A New Testament book. I believe Jesus Christ is speaking here. Matthew uh, 17, verse 21. Okay, verse 21 in Matthew chapter 17. No, this is 16. Chapter 16 is what I want. Chapter 16. Okay, hold on here. Let me see. I think I got them mixed up here. 17 is... Okay, I don't have that one for Matthew, but let's go back into 1 Corinthians. I don't have the scripture that I wanted noted for this chapter, Matthew. This is a book... And Matthew, and I don't see it here. I was looking at that one. Well, we can elaborate on this Matthew chapter 16, where Jesus Christ says, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me, for thou savors not the things that be of God, 
but he savors and he favors the things that be of men. And as he was speaking this, he was talking in reference to the fact that he was going to be crucified. Okay. And Peter was having a problem hearing about the suffering that he was going to go through. And so uh, Peter felt like, and I'll, actually, let me read it. Uh, verse 22, then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, be it far from, the, from thee, O Lord, this shall not be unto you. Because he thought that what Jesus Christ was telling him about him going to be crucified, that that should not happen to him because it sounds horrible. You know, he was telling him about the sufferings that he had to go through. And so what he tells Peter is that you're thinking about, you're thinking in, in the flesh, you're thinking the way man is thinking, but I'm talking to you in the spirit about what's getting ready to happen and how great this is getting ready to be in the spirit for the whole world because he is the sacrifice to mankind for their sins, okay? But Peter didn't understand it. He was thinking in the flesh instead of in the spirit, okay? So uh, another instance we can look at, the natural man versus the spiritual man. It's going to come to us from 1 Corinthians also, our Bible study reading chapter, or ch a book, I should say, but it's going to come to us from a different chapter, chapter 15. Because we were reading chapter 2, but this is in reference to chapter 2 and the natural man. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34. We only need one verse. Verse 34, it says, uh, 1 Corinthians, I'm going to start with verse 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. For I speak this to you, to your shame. But some men will say, how are the dead raised up, and with what body do they come? Because that looks foolish. You know, that doesn't look real to man. He says, so thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. So in that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that the, that body that shall be, but bare grain, it may chance of wheat or some other grain. But God gives it a body as it has pleased him, and to every seed his own body hallelujah that's a whole nother video all flesh is not the same flesh but there is one kind of flesh of men another flesh of beasts and another of fishes and another of birds there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial but the glory of the celestial is one the glory of the terrestrial is another so there is one glory of the sun another glory of the moon another glory of the stars for one star differs from another star in glory, okay? So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, but it's raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown in natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. So it is. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. So how be it that that which was, was not first, which is spiritual, okay, but that which is natural, and afterward, that which is spiritual. He's saying, well, that which came first was natural, but it should have been spiritual, and that which came afterward was spiritual, but that's what should have been uh natural okay the first should have been spiritual but it was actually twisted around so god corrected it so the first man is of the earth earthly the second man is the lord from heaven as it, as is the earthy so are they also that are earthy and as is the heavenly such are they also that are heavenly and as we have borne the image of the earthly we shall also bear the image of the heavenly hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I think I'm going to stop right there because I can go to the end of this chapter. And it's very good for reading in reference to understanding what God was, what God is doing and what God was doing when he uh, administered salvation into the earth for all mankind. 
All right, so that is going to bring me to the conclusion of our Bible study today for chapter two in the book of 1 Corinthians. God bless you, and I will see you on our next Bible study as we continue to go forward, finishing our New Testament Bible Word Bible study. God bless you.